Okay, so we were talking about vitamins and minerals. So how is it beneficial? Uh, vitamin B1 we are talking about for sensing this cold hypothermic environment. It's not only for that actually. Uh, also, we have to sense the presence of the infected creatures. So what about that? Vitamin B1, B2, B6, B12, all this helps avoid peripheral neuropathy. Otherwise, you will not be able to sense the presence of these creatures, right? The vibration of it. Okay. Not only vitamins, even minerals like phosphorus plays a role. Uh, okay. We have to get past this. All right. Let's get this thing. Yes. Got it. So when we are touching this infected creature, we have to think about how you know vitamins and minerals are going to help fight infection. For that, uh, we start with macrophage, which is the one which is going to sense the presence of antigen. And for that, vitamin B1 helps. And what does it do? It is going to phagocytose the bacteria. For that, vitamin B5 helps. It is going to do uh, uh, that by you know secreting cytokines like human necrosis factor alpha and interleukin 1. So what does that do? It is going to cause fever. We don't want fever. So B3 actually helps, you know, lower the secretion of cytokines. Okay, let's get this one. And what does the macrophage secrete the cytokine for? It is going to migrate neutrophils, accumulate in the infected site. For that, vitamin B6 helps. Okay, and uh, this neutrophil is going to use oxygen free radicals. We don't want too much of that. So, vitamin B2 helps, you know, reduce the effect of this oxygen free radicals. Actually, you know, uh, even vitamin D has immunoprotective effects. And for that, we require sunlight. I don't think we have adequate sunlight in this environment. Okay, I think now is the time. Let's get this one. All right. Oh no, oh no. Let's wait it out. Okay. So that's the. That's it, I guess. Oh, that's good. All right. So, what about you know the amount of water loss because of you know uh, respiration and perspiration? Got to think about that as well. It's like a minimum of seven hundred ml per day. And also in this cold environment, we usually feel like going to the bathroom a lot. So urine output is minimum of 0.5 liter to about. Uh, it's like 1.5 liters per day average and it's going to increase in this environment. And not only that, uh, you know, what about uh, the low atmospheric vapor pressure? It's going to be nearly zero. And what that is going to do is it is going to evaporate moisture a lot, especially from the lungs. So imagine, you know, how much water is going to get lost. That's why we, the lungs feel dry and we require more fluid intake in cold environments. So that brings us to the second aspect of the story actually. So this is the second main character whom we are going to play this game through. Her name is Ellie. Now actually for those who have uh, played The uh, Last of Us Part 1, they would know this character. So she was one of the main characters in the story in Part 1. So she, along with Joel, both of them actually, you know, traveled across America in the so in the story. I'm just giving a brief background about her so that we can follow the story from uh, this part. So when they traveled, you know, for the reason of finding a doctor to, you know, uh, create a vaccine against the uh, fungus, which is causing people to become infected. She was actually bitten, but uh, she apparently was immune to it. So through her, uh, she thought she could help create a vaccine. But at the end of the adventure, they did find a doctor, but uh, when Joel heard that she had to be killed in order to create a vaccine, he wouldn't 
go through with it. He took her out, talked her, hospital against her knowledge. She doesn't know, but and he convinced her to keep her immune status as secret, giving some reasons. So that is where the story ended in part one. So let's carry on. So these two, who's the other person? She's Dina, her friend. Okay, so both of them are just cruising around and we also cruise around uh, along physiology lane. So let's, you know, establish some baseline statistics. So heart rate, you know, average is 72 beats per minute and pumps like 5 liters. So what about us breathing? We breathe like say, 12 times a minute and around 500 ml per breath. Tidal volume is 500 ml. All right. So what happens when we breathe, the uh, oxygen and uh, carbon dioxide gets exchanged. We have to think about the partial pressure, pressure of oxygen that is entering the body. When it enters, it is like 104 millimeter of mercury and it passes through the blood supplying all the tissues. And when it reaches back deoxygenated blood, the partial pressure of oxygen comes down to say 40 millimeter of mercury. And there's a bit of carbon dioxide accumulation in the blood, right? When the blood reaches the lungs. So that goes up to about 45 millimeter of mercury and it expires the carbon dioxide in the blood and brings it down to 40 millimeter of mercury. So that's a good view. Hey, I So that brings us to the end of this part. Let's continue in the next one. Let's come to the topics we discussed today. We saw something about inflammation. We saw how vitamins affected. We saw something about fluid loss, something about oxygenation. So let's look at some questions now. So when we have to sense our surrounding environment, which vitamin is important for that? Vitamin A, vitamin B1, vitamin C or vitamin D? Vitamin B1. Vitamin A maintains our skin integrity. Vitamin C crosslinks our collagen, makes it strong. Vitamin D makes our bones strong. Also important for anti-inflammatory properties along with vitamin so, if we have to face a zombie in real life, I'm sure we'll crap our pants. So, if we have this vitamin deficiency, it'll make things really nasty. So, which vitamin is it? Vitamin B1, B2, B3 or B6? It is vitamin B3, niacin along with vitamin B5, pantothenic acid that can cause diarrhea. So when we are fighting these zombies, we are touching these infected creatures. So something in our skin has to fight, recognize this antigen and fight it, make, keep us safe. So which is it? Is it macrophage? Is it T lymphocyte, B lymphocyte or is it the dendritic cell? It is the dendritic cell which is going to activate the macrophage, T lymphocyte and B lymphocyte. So when we are relaxed, blood Pump from our heart per heartbeat, how much is it? 50 ml, 70 ml, 100 or 120 ml? It is 70 ml. When we are exerting a lot, it can go around up to 100 ml. Oxygen can have different, different functions in our body. Is it constriction of blood vessel? Is it formation of free radical, energy metabolism or all of the above? Oxygen is good for our body, but underutilization or overutilization might be bad. Like and subscribe to my channel. I'll keep posting more videos.